Uh, this is Zhi from Intel, and uh, I have already worked in Intel for almost four years, and I mostly I'm working on graphics virtualization, aka Intel GVTG. And uh, uh, now I'm one of the uh, kernel maintainers of GVTG device model in Linux kernel. And uh, today uh, 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 I will go to show you that uh, our um, maybe prog uh, progress from the production to upstream and uh, also you know other design opens. And uh, okay, yeah, let's see. Uh, uh, first, let's going to take a look at our current uh, status. Uh, okay, as you can see that our official website is still on uh, 01.org and uh, now we have a new developed mailing list on free desktop and welcome to share your ideas and uh, you know also patches and uh, the code repos now have to be moved to uh, GitHub and uh, GVT Linux repo and the whole development process is just like you know the upstream i915 code development model and also for cumul we still maintain some patches on you know topic branch for them because we haven't uh, upstream ever then support to you know to the uh, cumul upstream code and uh, currently we uh, we still have the uh, quarterly stable release mode uh, model. It's like that uh, we are going to pull one stable branch from the upstream branch and we will test and fix the bugs and uh, you know we are going to release it as a stable release model. Yeah, but all the fix or the you know uh, fix here will go back to the upstream you know. And uh, we have been worked with Citrix for quite a long time maybe from uh, Zen client and now we are working on Zen server and this year we uh, also worked with Red Hat and we, uh, our feature has been integrated into Red Hat RHEL 7.4 as a tec technical preview feature. And the most uh, big process we made today this year is we pushed the whole the pro uh, project into upstream Linux kernel uh, 4.10. Uh, uh, yeah, so... Uh, Yes, this is the major contribution from uh, uh, our developers. As you can see that, you know, uh, we developed a, a media device framework uh, with uh, Red Hat and NVIDIA because NVIDIA is also going to upstream their uh, vGPU code to the Linux kernel. And uh, also, the, uh, there is already a framework in, in the Linux kernel named uh, Virtual Function I.O. And uh, mostly it's used in a device parser through in QMU. And uh, the maintainers, he uh, extend that part to support the uh, media device support also in QMU. Uh, and uh, because our device model needs uh, now uh, will work as a sub-module in the host driver, so we need some kind of host driver changes. We worked with the Intel i915 team to achieve that. And, and also uh, because we are using uh, GPU shadow page tables, we need some kind of mechanism to track the uh, guest page table change. So uh, one feature we developed uh, uh, named uh, page track feature, uh, page tracking feature is developed by uh, Intel also upstream in uh, KVM. And the, the rest part is uh, our device model, uh, which means uh, it has all kinds of hardware uh, VGPU device knowledge here. And uh, it's about uh, 15,000 uh, LOCs and uh, it was pushed by our team. So mostly this is a contribution last year from uh, maybe, you know, all kinds of subsystem maintainers, yeah, and also all kinds of developers. Yep, okay. So now you can see because of the code upstream, we have to uh, change our architecture to, uh, you know, meet the requirement from the uh, Linux kernel maintainers, mostly uh, uh, you can see that in the old model, uh, previously in the old model, 
yeah, mo mostly the life cycle will manage by the QMU and LibXL together. And mostly the uh, LibXL will pass the parameters and uh, there is some kind of trivial code in QMU which will talk with the uh, uh, vGPU lifecycle management in the device model to create vGPU and also they can get the uh, domain ID at, at the device model so that uh, vGPU will be connected with a domain, right? So after that, the, then, uh, then MTP model could uh, um, uh, assign vGPU resources, mostly like, you know, uh, like uh, ZTAP, maybe, uh, how to say that, I'll request a server or something like that, or write protect uh, mechanism, yeah with the uh, domain ID and also to uh, VGPUS. But uh, you can see that in the new model, uh, all the VGPU lifecycle management has been moved to uh, MDV framework there. And uh, the libvirt will uh, be responsible for creating the uh, VGPUs and it will get a UUID in the sysfs and then it will pass that node to QMU so that QMU will know that which kind of uh, MDV it should be uh, emulated to the guest uh, OS there. And uh, after QMU gets the UUID, it will know uh, the, uh, the immediate device information, like how, how much bar it has, um, how much maybe uh, uh, other kind of resource it have so that it can um, uh, map it like uh, different VFL regions into QMU and also it has a framework inside to emulate the uh, a, a similar device uh, in the in the guest OS there so mostly it will also talk with KVM because in QMU there are several KVM listeners. So KVM will set up some kind of resource like, you know, for MMO bars, it will trap or pass through something like that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's the KVM device uh, MPT framework. Uh, mostly it will talk with the KVM so you can see that in the new framework, all the VGPU life management will be managed by the MDV framework. And uh, for MMO emulation, it also forward by QMU. Yeah, because uh, the MMO emulation will be forward to QMU and then in QMU, QMU will forward that uh, this MMO emulation to the device model. So mostly the device model only talks with the MDV framework and uh, yeah. And only in the uh, in the MPT module, it will talk with the hypervisor only. Yeah. So, okay. Yes, this is a briefly introduction about the new MDV framework in VF VFIO. So uh, the basic usage model is that you can create and configure the MDV in the. Uh, a sysfs node and then you got an UUID and then you can attach the UUID into QMU and then QMU will sh present the guest OS a uh, virtual device so that the de device driver in guest OS will attach to the uh, virtual device and also just like what I said before the IO trap will go to QMU first and then QMU will deliver the IO trap to the device model to the MDV driver here so for MDV driver, it's just a part of the uh, device, uh, 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 maybe an ordinary Linux driver. So it will attach with the ordinary Linux device driver. So that in that device drivers, uh, in the system node of the device driver, it will has an MDV support types folder. In that types, you can see how kind of MDV you can create. When you create one, then you can start to configure it and uh, then you pass that UUID to QMU, then you can use it. Yeah, so mostly uh, it's a very generic framework for sharing one physic device between VMs, like, uh, you know, you don't need to, uh, for the MDV driver, you don't need to care about maybe, uh, you know, how to talk with QMU, how to talk with hypervisor, uh, mostly it only talks with the framework and it don't need to care about what kind of other things, yeah.
and uh, also you know currently user for currently user in upstream kernel uh, GFX driver we have a uh, uh, Intel and Nvidia right and there is also an uh, S S6 uh, S390IO driver used MDV framework already in the upstream kernel. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, here is our then support upstream plan. Yeah, so the first first uh, stage is maybe we have to uh, support both old and new model, just like what I showed to you. And uh, the second stage is maybe we can um, use F, uh, VFL MDV to manage the VGPU life cycle, uh, life cycle. But we, yeah, we 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 cannot still use it. You know, like what I showed you in the previous slides. Yeah. The stage three is, you know, to uh, fully enable VFO in then uh, we need to maybe uh, refactor some code in Cumul. Like currently, the Cumul code, uh, the VFO in Cumul code will only talk to its KVM, right? We have to abstract that code and maybe extend to also to, uh, to also t uh, talk with then. And uh, because VFO was uh, previously. Uh, 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 framework for device parcel. So then PCI device parcel can also benefit from this generic framework. Yeah. So let's see something detailed. Yeah, this is the first uh, stage. It means that we have to uh, also upstream our uh, previous VGPU lifecycle management into upstream kernel. And so that you know everything in the old mode could work, and also you know in uh, in KVM we will uh, work in the new path. You know in the right side, we still uh, work with VFIO and something like that. Yeah. So mostly we are going to use LibXL and to manage the VGPU lifecycle and also everything work like before. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, stage two. Stage two, I think, is also probably uh, maybe easy to uh, be upstreamed, I think, because uh, maybe we only need to add a new attribute in uh, VFO MDV so that we can get the domain ID from LabXL, and then in the uh, MPT device model, it can connect a VGPU with an, uh, with, with an domain. And so everything could work just like before. But so you can see that we only use uh, MDV framework as a VGPU lifecycle management framework. So, and also, you know, because we have some kind of DMA buffer sharing mechanism based on VFLO. So in the stage two or, you know, the service from VFLO, I think we can already use it at this stage. Yeah, uh, just like what I said, I think it should be easy to move to this stage because it only needs maybe few changes in the MPT driver, not, you know, the VFL framework, and also we don't need to touch Cumul, right? Yeah. Ah, this is uh, stage three. As you can see that we have to refactor maybe code in Cumul. Uh, we, ha we have to uh, let the VFL logic in Cumul to talk with them. And also, you know, because the VFL is uh, developed uh, uh, based on KVM before, so it has some kind of assumptions, like it will assume that or the guest memory comes from the uh, user space memory or something like that. But in then, you know, all the memory comes from the foreign page. So we, maybe we, have, we might need to abstract that layer, you know, maybe memory comes from different place. We have to have different, you know, handling logic at that place. And uh, yeah, I think mostly we have to change there, uh, the VFL code in Cumul and also VFL code in MDV. But uh, because, you know, then had already had its own PCI pass-through logic currently, so it might need to, you know, refactor or, you know, 
um, add some code to support the PCI pass through, uh, through the VFLO function, yeah. So another requirement I, I think is PV LMU driver because uh, uh, we have a GPU shadow page table and uh, we have to access gas memory during our GPU command scan. So uh, mostly if we have a PV MMU driver and uh, we don't need to introduce new P2M translation hypercall and you might already see a lot of discussion in the uh, mailing list. And also we don't need to pin all the gas memory because the PV MMU driver will do that. Then we don't need to worry about that. Yeah, okay. Uh, this is the last page, call for action. Uh, mostly, uh, welcome to, um, you know, for ideas and also discussion in the mailing list about uh, maybe MDV supporting them and PCI device power source supporting them based on VFO. And uh, currently, we are also talking with the VFO maintainers uh, to see that, you know, uh, what kind of cooperation we could achieve, and uh, you know, how 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 can how how much plan he have already you know had yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. So, do you have some questions or? Yep. Does that work? <laughs> Try that? No, nope. yeah, there we go. Right. Okay, okay yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, the, the VFIO for pass through thing, I mean, I think the, the general direction is probably the opposite. Uh, yeah, I, I think the, the general desire is to move pass through into Zen itself. Mm -hmm. um, so, I'm not entirely sure VFIO is going to be the right way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we, we, you're probably going to be looking at some sort of broad equivalent. Yep. Uh, you know, hypercall interface into Zen to, to manage the life cycle of pass through. Yep. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I mean, I, I, one assumes that, that Zen GT could fit into that reasonably well. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's already essentially a standalone emulator in the Linux kernel, so it would have, you know, it would just have to basically talk to Zen to be managed. Yeah, in yeah. In a similar yeah. way. But yeah. Yeah. I'd see. I, I don't think the VFIO direction is necessarily the right one for Zen. I mean, obviously it is for KVM, mm -hmm. but that's because all the I/O is trapped through QEMU and KVM, and that's yep. not the case in Zen. Yeah. Yeah, but just like what I said, we, we, we can see how much maybe cooperation in the community we can achieve, right? We have to talk with a lot of guys. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi. <clears throat> I have a question regarding the new platform support. Do you plan, for example, uh, what is your goal to uh, involved in design or maybe support, better support for new platform, for example, for Apollo Lake? Uh, you mean for Apollo Lake? Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, it's a bit confidential here. But, okay. what, yeah, but what I can say is, you know, um, currently we, we, we didn't, we haven't had a plan to uh, maybe expose the Apollo Lake, you know, support to upstream because we, we also have similar project development at this time. I'm not sure uh, when the Apollo Lake support will be exposed. Yeah. Any more questions? Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm.